Hey, Mr. Z, we're talking about wells today. Yeah, all right. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. You got the learning targets on the uh, first, uh, first slide here, and uh, you want to go ahead and get yourself familiar with those and make sure you revisit them at the end of this, uh, this video segment to make sure that you can do all those different things. So we're talking about this deep subject today. Let's move <laughs> on to the first slide. So we're going to be going back over a little bit about what confined and unconfined aquifers are because they have a big impact on the type of well yeah. Whether it's an artesian yeah. well, if it's flowing or not, or non artesian mm -hmm. well. Yeah, and we're going to be taking a look at permeable layers and impermeable layers, a lot of stuff from uh, the last video as well. So uh, if we take a look at these two pictures, the one that's on the top left is the confined aquifer that Miss Awad and myself explained earlier. If you look at that picture a little bit closer, you can see the bedrock. It's not labeled, but it's on the far left-hand side. And then we have our aquifer that's kind of sandwiched in between that bedrock and then an impermeable layer above it. All right? And that aqu aquifer is confined to that space. So two aquifers on the top picture. Mm -hmm. The bottom aquifer confined between two impermeable layers or yep. two aquacludes. Exactly. And the top aquifer is unconfined. Mm -hmm. The water could recharge it from the surface directly. Okay. Exactly. And then let's look at this bottom one because this is, a, I think, a little bit simpler. So we've yeah. got a confining layer underneath, and we have a saturated zone, the water table itself, and then the unsaturated zone. Exactly. And in this case, somebody has dug a well into this aquifer. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that the level of the water in that well is the same as the water table. Is the same as the water table, and that's because it's an unconfined aquifer, so mm -hmm. there's nothing causing the water level to change oh. in that well. Unless it rains or anything like that, and the water table fluctuates just like it would normally, and it would do the same in that well. The, the level would be the same. In the case of rain, the water table level is going to change. Of and course. The well level is going to exactly. change. Yeah. So they're going to change together. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so that's kind of a simple situation. Yeah. So just a plain well. Mm -hmm. But in the top, we have a well that's called an artesian well. Yeah. So that artesian well is the well that is dug into the confined aquifer. Right? Yeah. So there's yeah. pressure on the water in that confined aquifer because it's confined. Mm -hmm. And that pressure is causing the water in that well to, to rise really flow above. Out. Yeah, to flow out of the well itself. And if we take a look at the top of the confined aquifer, we notice there's a line there that's the actual water table for that aquifer that's confined. And as you can see, that line is above the top of the well. And that's basically where the water wants to get to. It wants to get to that line. So because it's under that pressure, uh, it's going to flow out by its own accord. You don't have to pump the water out of it. All right. I think we go into a little bit more depth with that in the next slide. I think there it might be a better yep. picture there. Okay, so here, again, let's look at the slide and see what we've got for the, the layout here. We have a confining layer below and a confining layer in between mm -hmm. the confined aquifer and the unconfined aquifer. And we have two wells, and both of those wells are dug into the confined aquifer, uh -huh. and a third well that's dug into the unconfined, unconfined aquifer. So the well in the unconfined aquifer is going to have water that's going to rise to the level of the water table. Mm -hmm. But the water in the confined aquifer wells yep. is going to rise above the water table level within that aquifer. Yep. And that's because of the pressure surface. Exactly. So this dashed line across here is the pressure surface. Mm -hmm. And that's the level that the water will rise to. Exactly. So how do we determine if the water is going to actually flow out of these artesian wells? Or not? Well, if the top of the well itself is below that pressure level, then the water's going to want to come out of that well. But in this well to the left, because the well is higher than the pressure level, the water is just going to rise to that one space, to that pressure level, and just stay there. Okay, so the important thing here is we have to think about wells being things that we're using, and if the water isn't flowing out of the well by itself, we have to pump it out. Exactly. So in the case of the water well into the unconfined aquifer, we mm -hmm. would have to pump water from there. Yeah. In the case of the artesian well that's not flowing, we would have to pump water out of there. Yep. And in the case of the flowing artesian well, we're gonna, we would not have to pump water. We're going to put a well. valve on there to stop it from flowing all over the place. Okay, good. And it has to do with the potential surface. Exactly. Okay, great. All right. 
All right. I, I, I think this is a really good picture. I think that gives us a little bit of a, uh, of a clear idea of what's going on here. So uh, the difference between these two aquifers, and again, it's just pretty much explaining the same thing that we had done before. And we've seen this picture on the bottom now, I think, uh, a, a few times. Yeah. So we can, again, identify all the different layers. You should be able to identify um, <clears throat> the saturated zone, the unsaturated zone, and you should be able to identify the water table and know that that is an unconfined aquifer. It's not confined to a space. The water table rises and falls. Um, through rain, whatever it might be, and that same level in the well that follows the water table will also rise and fall. Now the one that's up on the top is, again, the confined aquifer. We have the bedrock that is impermeable and not porous. And we have the <clears throat> impermeable, impermeable layer that's also labeled there that kind of sandwiches that aquifer. And then we also have that pressure level that's listed there too, or, or drawn there, that dashed level. So students, you want to make sure that you can explain the difference between a well into an unconfined aquifer. Mm -hmm and a flowing and non-flowing artesian well into a confined aquifer. Yeah, and we call this whole picture like an actual artesian formation when we actually have this two impermeable layers and then a confined aquifer and a well under pressure. All right? Good. Okay. Let's go on. Oh, the cone of depression. Yeah, so this is another thing that they're going to see when they do the groundwater lab, right? Yeah, definitely, they will. Yeah. So we've been talking a lot about extracting water from that aquifer. Sure. When we pull water out through a well, whether we're mm -hmm. pumping it out or whether it's flowing out, yeah. we have to consider what happens to the water table locally around that particular well. Sure. So it's kind of like it's almost St. Patrick's Day, so do they have those great milkshakes at McDonald's? I'm sure they do. I like to talk about those because if yeah. you take the straw and you put it just down into that yeah. and you suck out a bunch of that great milkshake, yeah. You're going to see a little depression around the of straw course. Yeah. because you're sucking out the milkshake faster than the milkshake is flowing in around the straw. Exactly. And that's exactly the same situation here with the mm -hmm. cone of depressant, only this is forming underground. Yeah, and I mean it's associated with withdrawing that water out of the aquifer. So as you continue to pump it out, you're going to be developing that cone of depression and then eventually lowering the water table if it's not being recharged at the same rate that you're withdrawing water. Okay, so we're thinking back to the last video when they were talking about flow rates, Darcy's mm -hmm. law, and the permeability and uh -huh. the porosity and how those things impact the flow rate. Sure. So when you're thinking about drilling a well and how deep it needs to be drilled, these are some more things you need to know. Yeah, if you're definitely. going to be extracting water at a faster rate, then it's going to recharge in around the yeah. well, then you need to dig a deeper well of course. so, so that you can account more for water. that cone of depression. Of course. Right, real practical things here. Yeah. Good. Okay, well, city water system, so yeah, that well, water tower here, how does would, that mimic this natural system? Yeah, well, it's actually kind of like this artesian formation because that water is actually under pressure because it's at a higher elevation. And everybody's seen water towers because that's what that is, figure two, I guess, or number two there. And we see them all over the place. We see one actually right down the street from school, across the street from Lutheran General, and I'm sure you've seen several in the area around here. Um, but that water that's kind of way up high in that tower is under that pressure, and it actually uh, provides the pressure for water in the entire area of, of um, city, town, or whatever, community. So that's what's causing water to flow into your pipes? Exactly. And even flow up through the walls in the pipes? And yeah. Out to the second floor? Yeah, you're right, exactly. Okay. So think about the comparison between the natural system and what man has built to manage city water. Yeah. Good. Well, copied it, basically. You're right. That's what we've done. Well, I think we talked a little bit about springs before, but here's yeah. another example of a spring that's flowing freely out onto yeah. the surface. And just an actual picture of it. I mean, the one we had was just kind of a sketch of one, but um, we, uh, we talked about it in terms of a perched aquifer with the, with the aquifer kind of sitting on top of an impermeable layer, and then where that aquifer meets the surface, we actually have water flowing out, and, and this is a picture of that. It looks like it's feeding into a larger body of water. Mm -hmm. So I think they're ready for their quiz? Oh yeah, I think they're definitely ready. Go back and over your learning targets, make sure you're good on all the terminology there, and jump yeah. out to the class website. Definitely keep track of the vocab for, uh, for this video and then the videos before. Cool. All right, thank you, you very much. Can.